104.1 KRBE. If you know the three-digit extension of the... All right, let's hit it. Now time for Rule and Ryan's prank call. All right, Special K, what's it all about? Well, first, tell everybody how to find you for prank calls. You're going to go to krbe.com forward slash prank call requests with an S, and it comes up to this cute little form. You can tell me all about what's going on. Now, make sure you, you, you go into a smidge of detail, not just, she works at a firm doing this. And she yeah. works at a law firm. Ha, okay. It's going to be funny if you call my mom. Or I just get the name. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the name of the street. All right. Cool. Well, that's a good start. Well, um, let's find out a little more information about what's going on today. This is Rebecca, and we're pranking my husband, Josh, and he owns a pool company, and you're going to play a old guy in the pool that's stuck, and that someone put shock in it, and you can't, like, get your way out of the pool on a rash. <laughs> Thank you so much for okay. your help. That'd be cool. Thanks. All right, bye. Okay, so I tried to call him, and so if you uh, don't understand what's going on there, he's a pool uh, serviceman, and yes. he it had to shock my pool. Now, shock is like a cup of bleach, a lot of cups of bleach. A lot of chemical so chlorine. You can't get in there for like quite a few hours, right? right. Yes. But they, you have to really throw it. And you that, do. And if that wind's going, I could see where it could be plausible where some idiot would be on a raft. And try and sprinkle it in there and get back so to the side. They mm. call it Stupid, shock because but... it shocks it from green to clear is what you want it to do. Now, this is, has nothing to do with electricity. When oh, you yeah. shock your right. pool, do not put an extension cord in no, your pool. No. 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 Oh, my God. Don't okay. walk in there with a hair dryer. Um, this gentleman was sweet enough to call me back. He saw the uh, he saw I left a message. I was like, um, I'm stuck in in my pool. I need your help. <laughs> oh, so he calls me back and this is how that conversation went. Good morning. This is Stanley. Stanley, hey, this is Joshua Clearbull, our pool. I just missed your phone call. Okay. Thank you so much for calling me back. I'm in quite a situation. You're the pool master? Yeah, what's going on? Um, you service my son's pool on the same street as the and I, I believe I have overshocked the pool. What's wrong with it? I am currently uh, speaking to you from a floaty, like a floaty donut, and, and I'm in the pool. You know the floaty donuts? Uh-huh. Okay, it's like a Dunkin' Donut with, like, chocolate and sprinkles, and you can float on it, and I'm on it right now in the pool because I overshocked it. Oh, no. Okay. The rain made the pool a shade of chartreuse and, like, swamp water. Chartreuse. <laughs> Yeah, just shock it and just let it run. Yes, yes, sir, but I, I was hot, so I shocked it with an extension cord, like my son said. The orange one? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> sir, I can't, yeah. I can't get out. I'm, I'm in it now. I still can't see the bottom. It could be an alligator in there, a baby pigeon. <laughs> yeah, sounds like there's an alligator in there. That's what happens when you put an extension cord in. They attract the gators. And the gators. Oh, jeepers. Do you have the number to center point? Usually they can't keep the electric on, but the, the seem, it seems pretty sparky in here today. Oh, my God. Like, sparky. A little bit electrified. Electrified? Could you have a long wand or something? You could knock me over to the side or something like that. I, this is the only number I have. Maybe a box of Special K. Oh, oh I, wouldn't, I, I don't eat anything without fiber. And also, I don't want to do the electric slide today. You remember that song in Boogie Woogie Woogie? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, well, well. Rebecca said she would pick up the phone for me. <laughs> Darn it. <laughs> oh, Lord. That was a good one. Thanks, Love you. That's awesome. You'll be fine. Just put some more shock in it. Oh, God. Uh, just another 20 amps? <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I'm just messing with you, obviously. Re Rebecca said it would be a good time to get you. Yep. Do you have a message for Rebecca who tried her best? Yeah, well, I love you, babe. Thanks. <laughs> and then what is the name of your pool company so we can get you a little bit of business? Clear Blue Water Pools in Kingwood, Texas. Clear, Clear blue, blue Water Pools in Kingwood, Texas. And do they know what to say when they've been pranked by Special K at the end of the call? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you just got pranked by a special K. Almost, right? Almost. All right, I'll go back to my donut. <laughs> All right, <please. laughs> have a good day. <laughs> Bye, Josh. Dude, just laugh.
<laughs> I'm glad he realized it was you. I'm glad he knew it was you. because He knew right away. He didn't, and then he's just laughing at a customer. Right, that's what I was thinking. If this guy doesn't know it's you, I don't know why. Is he nervous laughing because he can't believe this older gentleman is floating in the shock? But the electrocuted. Oh, as soon no. as you said the orange electrical cord, that was it. He was gone. He's I think like, you're from... Because as soon as you right from the beginning. Yeah. If you oh, listen, yeah. you know that character. Mm-hmm. Maybe he, a box of special K. I like he said that, that they, they both love the show and they listen all the time. So it's, that's it's a tough nice. One. That's a hard to get them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I love to hear that sometimes. I, you know, people should know it doesn't always work out perfectly for me. But, right. you know, if I get halfway through, I'll give it to you. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Go to com yeah. slash prank call requests and you can uh, set somebody up on a prank call with Special K. And on Fridays, he does prank calls as well. Sometimes the call comes to him when, the, when it says, potential scam, or I'm sorry, potential spam, yes. which we know is a scam. Uh, he welcomes those. And on Friday, we will be setting up the camp activities as a lot of kids are coming back from camp or going to a new one here mm-hmm. at the end of the summer. Okay. Camp is on deck for the, the phone <laughs> scams land. Okay, coming up next, closure is something people seek when they have had a relationship with someone of any time lim- time amount, and then the person just disappears. Doesn't always have to be romantic. Right. Could be any kind of relationship. We've had a student who tracked down the teacher that mentored her. We've had a woman whose father passed away and wanted to reconnect with his best friend to just see what's going on with Uncle Bill. Office mates, you think your friends, they get fired. You don't know where they... What happened What happened to him? In this case, we do know this is a gentleman who wants to track down a woman that he said was the love of his life. So we are going to give somebody closure. You go to krbe.com. Eric will contact you and get you on the show so you can get more of your story. Next on The Rule and Ryan Show. They were in your life and then they weren't. And you wonder what happened. Where are they? Where did they go? Why can't I get in touch with them? Why why are they ignoring my texts? Oh, I don't see them on social media. Why they wipe themselves off the face of the earth? Sometimes that happens. Sometimes you just see them living their best life without you. So go to krve.com. Eric will contact you, get all the details that he needs. Then he will find that person. They don't answer your calls, but they answer his. And then we connect you guys on our show to get you some closure. So Chris reached out to us. Let's get his story. Good morning, Chris. How's it going, y'all? Pretty good. It's going well, Chris. So who is it you're wanting to get closure from this morning? Kelly. Pretty much the love of my life. She's an ex-girlfriend of mine that uh, we, we dated for five years. Oh, okay. What happened in the end there? Why, why didn't y'all? She's the love of your life. What happened at the end? I was just an idiot, and I broke up with her about a year ago. She kind of threw down the ultimatum, you know, get off the pot. Poop or get off the pot. <laughs> so she wanted you to what? Propose? Yeah, she wanted me to take it to the next level, engagement. I mean, we were already living together, so she wanted me to, to propose. All right, five years together is not like an unheard of concept. She's probably thinking, let's move forward with our lives, and you didn't want to, so you broke up with her. How old are you guys? 32. She's she's 31. Yep. Yeah, you should be ready to commit at that point. A lot of people like to have, you know, get married, then have kids, have two or three kids before they're 40. Yeah, it, it, it was the worst mistake of my life. I feel terrible. I miss her. I think about her every day. Have you tried calling her? Yeah, I tried calling her, texting her, DMing her, everything, messenger, and none of it. None of it's going, I don't oh, know if it's going you. through. I'll tell you this, she's hurt. <laughs> Yeah, Eric's she's talking. listening right now. She can hear everything you're talking about. But, so I guess, you have, so, do you not follow her on social hurt. media? Or did she turn you, like, did she block you from that? Can you at least follow her path? I mean, is she dating anybody now? Or He's blocked, okay. Rola, so why don't we just get Kelly on the line? Yeah, because she can hear you. Chris, say hi to Kelly. Hi, Kelly. Welcome to the show. Hi. Hey, Kelly. You hear a man that's in pain. You want to help him? No, actually, I'm going to call BS on this whole thing here. I mean, a month later, you were dating this stripper. Does yeah, she date- actually want or she just looks like when you're just calling her Wait, that? are you calling her that? <laughs> no, she legit is a stripper. We have mutual friends, and he met her at a strip club, and all of a sudden, their pictures are on Instagram. Chris, is this true? Are you dating a stripper? Or did you? No, I did. I did. her, And it was a knee-jerk reaction thing, and it was stupid. I was hurting, and I didn't know what to do. And every time that I was with her, I was thinking of you. Oh, my God. Oh, do not tell her that. Do not say that. Do not tell oh, her that. Oh, God, dude. <laughs> that's not going to get you any fans. Oh, that sucks. You are unbelievable, dude. No. After a year, you're coming at me with Well, what's this? going on with you, Kelly? Are 
you with somebody or what's your social status right now? You know, not that it's anybody's business, but yeah, I am dating people. I'm weighing my options. And honestly, you are not one of them. Oh, so no but sometimes chance. people don't realize what they got till it's gone. Well, then, but That's sometimes it's gone. It's said. too far to get back. I think the, the heavy metal band, the hair metal band from the 80s. Meant, I thought you meant the Disney princess. I don't oh, remember no. that in the movie. Look, we had five years together. You wasted five years of my life with your BS. I don't have time for this. I, I want to spend my life with you, and that's why I bought a ring. And all you have to do is say yes. It's yours. Right. You're proposing I, to me on the Rula and Ryan show? Yeah. Well, go ahead then. Wait, yeah, how's the proposal go? Yeah, go ahead. Propose to her if you want to try. Get down on one knee, dude. <laughs> Sell it. Kelly, will you marry me? For real. Oh, my <laughs> God. That's, it. You that's selling it? How for, you feel? For real, bro. No. I blocked you for a reason. Leave me alone. Oh, man. Well, you got to respect your wishes, dude. Yeah, she blocked you. She doesn't want to hear from you, dude. Kelly, is there anything I can do that would make you change your mind? No, dude. She's calling you dude. That's not a good sign. Yeah, when a girl calls you dude, uh-uh. All I can say is I'm sorry, Kelly, and I love you. Well, that's great. Are we done? All right. Yeah, I guess yes, we are. Yes, we're done, Kelly. Thanks Kelly, for taking Kelly. the initial Thank you call. for at least talking to him and setting him straight. And Chris, that's a big move. You wanted to drop that on her, but it what didn't sound sincere. Yeah, a little too little it, too late. It sounds like she's right about she felt like her time was wasted. Wasn't even a good proposal, dude. Well, what do you want me to do? You want me to get all the fanfare out of here and just say, we just sing it from the mountaintops? So what do you want me to do? You should have had this planned a little bit better, dude. I don't even think it matters, guys. I think no matter dude. What? I, like, you know, I know, because she said it. I think no matter what he said, Kelly had moved on. Yeah. She's not actually with anybody, but that even is telling for you, Chris, that she was deeply hurt and she's angry and she's not even dating anybody seriously and is not even going to consider taking you back. Thank you, guys. I, I, I get it. I get it. I think if you had came to her like maybe a week later and said, hey, I've made a mistake. Then possibly he couldn't. He was busy with a stripper. Right. He had some lady. I think that hurt her the worst. You dumped her after five years, and because then a month later you. you started yeah, dating a stripper. That's not good. That's like so cliche and just gross. Listen, I, I give you an A for the effort, but it's you have your closure. Dead. That's for sure. It may not be the closure you wanted, but it's done. Now you can move on. I appreciate it, guys. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna go uh, drown my sorrows in a beer. Hold on. Next time you propose <laughs> to a woman, just make sure it's really sincere, because that wasn't sincere. Or in person. <laughs> yeah, not on the phone. It sounded like it was out of desperation, like, "Well, I want to marry you. Ah, uh, will you marry me?" And then you're just doing because it. Then she's thinking she was mad, and she's just thinking you're doing that, uh, Peaser. I just wanted to let her know that I was serious and that it was it was different. But I'm glad you didn't it's, just try and get her engaged last year if you didn't feel it. Yeah, because nobody wants to be engaged. It wasn't to meant to be. be engaged yep. to them. You know, you got to accept that it wasn't meant to be. Uh, all right. Thanks for coming to us, Chris. Good luck. Yeah. Okay. Bye. All right. Bye bye. I mean, so I mean, I, 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 you know, people think I'm being harsh or cold, but I mean, it's like you got to let that go, dude. Somebody wanted, I Dude. guess, to try and call us, but they have our old area code, and they texted, what's going on with y'all's uh, phone number? It's 833-390-KRBE, not 713 anymore. It is a toll-free area code. We're saying that a lot the next five weeks. 833-390-KRBE. Um, speaking of the proposal as the knee-jerk reaction to, oh, save, save the relationship. There's a scene in the movie Walk the Line. Reese Witherspoon won an Academy Award for playing June Carter Cash. Joaquin Phoenix should have won for playing Johnny Cash. It's a movie, Walk the Line. And the whole story, the love story of Johnny Cash, he's loved June Carter Cash since he was a kid. It's this tumultuous relationship, blah, blah, blah. They're on the tour bus, and he wakes her up. And he'd asked her many times to marry him. And she wakes her up, and she's on this, and she goes, next time you want to ask him somebody to marry you, don't do it on a stinky tour bus with a bunch of stinky men. And we're traveling across the country. I'm exhausted. Don't wake me up. I mean, she was like so mad at how he just was like, well, come on, marry me, June. And she goes, don't ask me on a dirty tour bus. It's like so romantic. Like if you n never, never propose to a woman in this like one off, you know, in, in what's the impulsive nature where it's like we're, we just got through loading the Costco out of the trunk and I you're just, just standing you. there in this hot driveway in the guys August, get so Houston, excited yeah. and, and they you're like, just, they you want to marry me? <sighs> what? I think these guys get so excited they can't contain themselves. Do you think themselves. that's because the, the woman wants a good story to tell their friends? Well, sometimes that could be a good story because you'd be like, yeah, we were just we just came back from Costco and we were just staying in the driveway. And he just looked at me and said, 
I want to marry you. What if he had a ring and then said that? Uh, it's different circumstances, but I feel like in this... Uh, I, actually, let me clarify. Don't impulsively propose to him to save your, your relationship. Mm-mm. That's really the message. Yeah. Because I'm sure people have different proposal stories of all different kinds, and it was romantic for them, or it was great for them. But do not propose to a woman in desperation to get her to stay. Nobody wants that story. But to your point, Eric, yes. The engagement story, people always ask you, tell me how it happened. Tell me how it happened. How did it happen? And I, we did this whole topic uh, a couple years ago, how many women actually remember with the words that were said? It's like white noise. You're like, oh my God. It's happening. It's happening. I couldn't remember. Sam couldn't remember. We're gonna just, do, what was that topic we were going to do? Maybe next week. Hmm. Uh, Which one? Uh, proposals that are embarrassing. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That you, that you got to propose to, but you can't tell your family or friends how you really got proposed to. because someone texted, so awkward. They were on the on the toilet and yes. got proposed to. What? Wait, 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 one wait, wait. One of our wait. texters that said that her sister got proposed to by her brother-in-law while he was on the toilet. And, it, and the text was, while on the toilet, you know, dropping a deuce. And I responded to the texter. Oh. I said, wait, your sister was on the toilet or the fiance was on the toilet? And she goes, oh, no, did they clarify? He, was, he, was, he was on the toilet. Oh, right? well, he was on the she toilet. was, it's easy for him to kneel down. Wow. Right, wait, 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 face to face. wait, wait, so she's no, getting ready, ready no in the bathroom. Zone. She's getting ready in the bathroom. There are a couple she's getting ready in the well, bathroom. We don't know the whole story. He's yeah. just from text. I have no That's idea of details. things where... You don't want to tell people that yeah, story. Yeah, she can't tell that story. So she's the worst proposal ever. Yeah, embarrassing proposal stories, and you've changed the story because you don't want people to know the real truth. How embarrassing the proposal was. As a female ruler, mm-hmm. if you're with a guy for five years, yeah, they break it off. You break it off, and then you find out he's dating someone a month later, and then the mar- and gets engaged to that girl. Yeah, that's so cliche, and it's happened to so many people. Uh, that would screw what me up as a woman or anybody. Her, it does screw that you. Up. You didn't propose to her, but the very next girl you barely know is now going to be your wife. You're like, I put in all this time. I grew with you. We thought we were going to have a life together. And now you got somebody you barely know and you're giving her the ring? How many times do we hear this story where it's years and years and years together and he didn't want to get married and it turns out he just didn't want to get married to you? That's what they think. Well, the other other flip is I know a real-life couple that dated for 10 years. 10 years. That's a long time. They got married and lasted two. That happened with Helen Hunt and Hank Azaria. Yeah, they were... Dayton. They were together forever, Dayton, and when they're... they got married, they didn't last, I think, even four years together, maybe? Mm-hmm. Like, isn't it so interesting how that is the case? But, uh, yeah, if that's happened to you, where you dated somebody, and you thought this was it, and then they break up with you, and they get engaged to the very next person they dated, I'd like to hear from you on the listener line at 713-278-VENT. On our text number, 37530, this texter says, I had to fake react to my proposal. Because I figured it out because he was Aww. eager to get me to his mom's on Christmas. Aww. So I had to fake react. The question is, Texter, mm. does he now know you fake reacted? Or are you still married to that? Like, did you man. tell him, hey, I already knew you were going to do that, but I want to break the surprise? And are y'all still together? I think they're still together. Why would you think they're not together? I mean, who knows? If they fake reacted after a while, you're. Like, well, wouldn't the Texter have said I had to fake react my proposal to my ex? That's too many words while you're trying to drive in well, a stoplight. Voice, voice texting. <laughs> what you shouldn't be doing. Voice texting, God. The voice text fails me every time. I this feel like the people knows. that text us don't voice text because it's no, you can read it. It's correct. When you do your voice oh, track, man, mine text, are terrible. yours is indecipherable. Oh my God. I have no idea what you're saying. Do you know why? Because I'm always on one I earbud. I think it take you less time it does to not. type it. I can't. Or do you look at it afterwards no. and read back no, through it? No, she clearly doesn't. No, no, just no. hit send. She makes us do all the work. Yeah. You just like, I have what? the earbud and Let then I hit it, send. Peasants. Well, you always know when it's rule of texting because you oh, hear this. Total mess. Ding, 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 
Oh, wow. Proposal. Want some, want some cheaper insurance? Actually, mm. insurance did us in. After we got married, uh, what do you mean Booster's insurance went up five times, like went up to like 500 <laughs> from really? under 100. Yes. What? Yes. Because the marketplace is less expensive okay. for for our previous situation. Hmm. And so now he's on, now he's on ours here. Which, oh, yeah, yeah. Burn, yeah. Have a significant other husband up on there come to find out. Throw some kids in there and you'll really wow. see. Oh my oh, gosh. Yeah. I can't imagine. Crazy. You never hit your deductible oh, ever. Man, nope. That's crazy. No. Uh, by the way, somebody else texted they had to also fake react at the proposal. I had to fake react too because I saw the cash withdrawal from the bank and my mom suddenly wanted to, me to go get my nails done and have a family photo shoot. So you get it? Like oh, to, so they knew. For yeah. The ruse was, Thought we're going to do a family photo shoot, but really they wanted the photographer there so they could capture the proposal. And if the mom was like, let's get your nails done. Oh. Huh. Oh, I yeah. his mom pushing me to get my nails done. I wonder. And obviously they were sharing Bank accounts, and that's what it was. Uh, somebody texted also, Rule, I feel your struggle. Every time I do a voice text, something always gets mistyped. And while most of my family teases me because it's usually the family in the group chat, my daughter saves me by saying, I've lived with her long enough. I know what she's saying. I know. my. I have a one mom friend who goes, I, I translate Rula. I can translate Rula. I don't know. Your <laughs> husband texts me. I it's wish terrible. she'd just pick up the phone and call instead of texting. I don't <laughs> call him because I don't know if he's in a meeting or, you know, that's so annoying. Like, the person can't answer Can the I phone. Ask you, have you ever, in the last six months, maybe a year, ever text with your fingers? Yeah, of course. That's the problem. I feel like you've never texted. I feel like you just talk. Oh, no, no, no. I will text you guys with my... But that's really bad. What's like, the it's last... not even close. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was always just you talking and it just... No. So it's uh, the wrong word. It's like 70% of the time, one earbud voice text. 30% of the time, I'm actually texting you. But it'll, I, I go so fast... It's just a total disaster. It doesn't autocorrect. Yeah, it doesn't. Oh, you can edit now with iPhone. You can go back and edit your text rather uh -huh. than just star this, star that. You know, asterisk correction. <laughs> just go click on it, and you can go back and actually edit the text and send it yeah. back. Like, yeah, and like try that again. Like this one. <laughs> I'm looking. You, speaking of insurance, we had a question on our show thread about insurance physicals. And I texted that one. Look at my. That actually was a text. It wasn't. I think I actually started voice texting it, and I saw that it was messed up. So then I <laughs> physically changed. I have to it. say, looking at you guys' text out there, you guys, we, we have the most romantic listeners. This one, my dad took my mom to Walmart and said, "Get a ring. We're getting married." <laughs> hey, get <out. laughs> hey, give that shotgun oh. over there too while you're at it. It's time. Wait, somebody said you if you have an iPhone, you can edit within the text instead of send more That's what I just yes, told he you. He just literally just, said that. Oh, I didn't hear you say that because, Eric, I was distracted by the text. I'm sorry. I totally tuned you out, Kevin. <laughs> How do you do that? He's used you, to it. Booster does that to him. <laughs> I'm sorry. I totally tuned you out. Oh, wow. Just, okay, so you you hold on it. You like you cl you click on it. Like, hold on the text. Like, okay. put your... Put your put After your, I already sent it. Yeah. Put your little thumb up on there. Okay. And then it'll give you the option to edit it. Okay, let me try that with yeah. that one about... Oh, okay. Look at Wait, that. What does it say? More? I gotta hit more? No. No, no it says edit up on there. No, look. Oh I'm holding God. it down. The bubble I can never see. Up. You got that it's privacy reply. screen, too. Nobody look, can see. It's reply, add sticker, copy, translate, more. When you hit more, the question is delete. I don't see where it that says edit. privacy screen. Is that, isn't that annoying to have? Yeah. What is the privacy screen? I just put it on. It's like you can't see it from the side, so no one can look if at I'm, your text. If I'm, oh. like, on... Like, see how if, if it's not sideways, you oh. can't, I can't show... I have you don't to want to be looking at that top on. secret texting. Well, although you do see some people, as you get older, they make the text a lot bigger. Mm. So you could be two rows back in the airplane, and you could see what that person's saying. Yeah, it's kind of weird. You ever see that? Yeah, because your eyes get bad. I don't know. I, I was at Marshall's, and just like anybody in line at Marshall's, they have plenty of things to buy last-minute impulse. And I... You know that glass little cover breaker thing that yep. protects your screen on your iPhone. Yeah, one of those. That one had cracked. So I was in line at Marshall's TJ Maxx, whatever it was, and they had like a whole section there of like AirPod cases and all this. And I go, oh, okay, I need to get another one of those things. I didn't realize I was, I thought I was buying like the glass crack protector with Privacy. No, I just bought privacy, <laughs> and it has driven everybody crazy because so too many times. Is? Yeah, that's it is a privacy screen. Oh, take that thing so off. So, er, why you want to look at my phone so much? No, just annoying because when you want to show us, yeah, you can't see it. Because it's so dark. About. Privacy screen. It is good though for iPads on airplanes. To your point, Eric iPads are super awkward if you don't have a privacy screen because everyone can see what you're watching. And if you want to watch something on Netflix on an airplane and there's going to be some naughty scene, that is Ooh. totally fine. It's not like you're watching something inappropriate, but that just happens it's on Netflix some, shows. There might be happens. kids on the plane or the person four rows back at the aisle can see the naughty scene. Watching your Bridgerton. Yeah, oh my God. Do not watch Bridgerton season one on the airplane unless you have a privacy <laughs> screen, people. 
Episode six. <laughs> Some oh, kid Lord, next year. That'd be awkward. <laughs> okay, coming up next in Celebrity Scoop, uh, in case you missed it, I have to revisit for the seven o'clockers how much Snoop is making at the Olympics because it's insane how much he's getting paid to just dance in the stands and go meet the fencers. Yeah. And also, is Colin play by Jost play. gonna lose his foot because of what happened to him at the Olympics? Colin Jost from Saturday Night Live was a correspondent in Tahiti. It has not gone his way. He has seen the medical team more than any of the athletes. Well, here we'll he's got a new job it. coming up, too. We'll talk about it all next on the Rule and Ryan Show. Rule and Ryan Celebrity Scoop Woo! on KRBE. It is brought to you by Takari Arandas, and um, the Olympics are continuing on. The closing ceremony will be August the 11th. Snoop Dogg has made everybody's day, and nobody knew they needed that, <laughs> as the joke is. I didn't know I... I needed to have that on my bingo card <laughs> that Snoop Dogg was going to win the Olympics more than the athletes. But we found out that NBC pays Snoop Dogg a half a million dollars a day for wow. his contribution to what wow. we're seeing on television. He's making Woo! 15 million bucks uh, <laughs> while he's wow. there. So, of course, he is visiting all the athletes, all the events, and doing everything they're asking him to. Dressing up the way he, they need him to. Going to have lunch with Martha Stewart oh, at a fancy yes. restaurant. Mm-hmm. Yes. There's a restaurant that Easy. I saw in the, mo- in the show uh, Emily in Paris on Netflix where there's like a big... Um, conversation happening in this big scene. I was like, that that looks familiar. How do I know where Snoop Dogg and Martha are eating lunch? Oh, that was in Emily in Paris. <laughs> I don't know where it was, but I recognize the scene. I do know that restaurant. Uh, my daughter and I went to that one. What's and, it called? Oh, God. We went there, and I remember that it wasn't bad, but it was so expensive. It was, like, ridiculous. That's like a I very mean, expensive place. That fancy place. <laughs> so Snoop Dogg is making lots of cash. A lot of NBC uh, correspondents, you know, they're trying to promote whatever they can. NBC has a lot of SNL stars there. Uh, yesterday they had Ego, um, Ego and what's the blonde girl from Saturday Night Live? I always forget her name, y'all. She not, plays, I'm going to, I'm going to Tommy's and I'm taking, I'm going, I'm taking the kids to Tommy's and I'm going to my sister's. Some of I don't know their names. I don't know their though. names, though. They're like, not, yeah, they're not yeah. memorable. So the SNL cast is there. Colin Jost, who does Weekend Update, was supposed to be the correspondent from Tahiti for the surfing competition. Mm-hmm. Um, and I remember his first day of broadcasting, he had said how he was standing in some shallow water. And what mm-hmm. he didn't know is there's some sort of a sea creature that yes. was in that water. That They said if that thing stings you, yeah. like you could die from this sting. Oh, my. Yes. So he's yes. like, well, yes. thanks for yes. telling me now. Uh. So he was making jokes about that. But he did actually scrape his foot up on some coral. Ooh. And that led to a staph infection where it just kept sending him back and back and back to the medical tent. And he said he made a joke that he has seen the Olympic medical team more than the athletes have. But yeah, a staph infection can kill you. It's a sea urchin is what can stab you. And so that's where you want to wear those... um, Water shoes. The water, water, the water shoes. shoes. Yeah. You know, well, those little, little, little things to slide on. The coral reef, he said, is what cost him the time in the medical tent from the open wounds on that. <laughs> and he said that he did not think that when he had gotten scraped up by the coral, that then when, you know, you're not wearing shoes or you're wearing some kind of sandals that you could be in the water around, there are ants there that would get <gasps> oh. on his foot. Oh. So it sent him back. Then he got an ear infection. He said, I am now on three different medications, four if you count pina coladas. My new goal is to have as many infections as there are Olympic events. Um, and finally, they had to just send him, he had to leave because it's too, he was going to leave anyway because when those events were done, it was done, but he's j- just so hurt. Mm-hmm. He posted a picture of his foot so bandaged up, I oh. worry he would lose his foot. Yeah. It's so bad. But you can't just fly out of there. Don't you have to take like a boat an hour From or two? Tahiti. and then Take it to a plane, a, a bigger place. And who is I'm this sure. again? It's Colin Jost from Joe's. SNL Weekend Update. Colin. Well, looking um, on the map, there's nothing really close. There's Bora Bora, American uh-huh. Samoa, and those are it it hundreds of miles away. To get there too. And, and we yeah. found out that, because we were asking earlier in the scoop in the 6 o'clock hour, like, why, why is it in Tahiti if they're never going to see Paris for the events? Because there's a French-owned... Um, island. Tahiti is owned by France. Yes. Mm, yeah, okay. okay. French Polynesia. That was, a, that was a long journey back in the it day. Sure it's a was. beautiful it sure place. Was. And the waves are perfect. That's it's really so scary. scary. Staph yeah. infections can lead to sepsis and death. And yeah. it's really, yeah, really serious. My pup-up lost his leg after uh, a fishing incident when some salt water got into a uh, wound. Either it, really? I think, I want to say maybe a fishing hook. Oh! 
got Ooh. into him, oh. and then some of the some of the uh, seawater got onto his leg. Wow! Oh, and yeah, God. totally lost his leg from the from right above the the knee. How old was he when that happened, Kevin? Oh, he was in his seventies, and I believe he was also on some type of cancer treatment drug. Oh my! So goodness. it was uh, what do they call that? You know, immune deficiency probably at wow. the time. Because a lot of times your body can fight off those types of infections. And sometimes it can't. Like, yeah. you might have gotten the uh, update or the report over the weekend that Vibrio was strong in the Galveston waters. Oh, you guys have fun at your houses down and there. One <laughs> of our texters said, um, the man from Par- a Paraline woman is sharing the message of warning after her father died after he was infected by Vibrio bacteria oh while fishing God. in Freeport. Oh, fishing, there you go. In Freeport. Oh, fishing. Um, another note on Colin Jost. Fish. You okay. may have heard that fishing Amazon... Fishing fatality. Yeah, fishing fatality. That Colin sucks. Jost is in the running to host the pop culture spinoff of Jeopardy on Amazon Prime. It's a streaming only Jeopardy, not Sounds the Ken Jennings. It ABC is. It does sound way more fun. Like I watched, I it's fun recently, because we actually might know the answer. You might yeah. know the answers. I recently watched a real Jeopardy when I was like homesick a couple weeks ago and I was like, I don't know any of these no, questions. No, it's, it's gotten so super brainy. But don't brainy. you feel like a king of all brains when you do know yeah, these no three one. in a row? Uh-huh. You're like, I know three in a row. I can go on this game. No, Never you like, can't. No, you can't. Like, no. Yeah, I don't know any. Yeah, yeah. It's like rapid fire. show to tell you what's going down. Anything's possible. Okay, so Houston, Texas is the third most shoplifted city in America. 23% of Americans admitted to shoplifting in a recent Lending Tree study. Uh, of those recent shoplifters, 90% said they were motivated to do so because of inflation and the current economy. No, you're just being a criminal. Yeah, you're just being a dirtbag. Yeah, you can wow. say, well, that makes you feel better. Mm. Well, it's inflation. No, you're just no. gross. I agree with you. More than one in five Americans admitted to shoplifting, and of those, 23% admitted to doing so within the past year. Like, if you're stealing food, at least that's food that you need to survive. But if you're stealing, but someone's like, lawnmower yeah. from their shed like during Sam? a hurricane. Uh, we, all, we all hate it. You're purses, a jerk. Purses while someone's pumping gas yeah. or, Lee. you know, just walking into stores and just walking out brazen as hell with mm-hmm. a cart full of things you didn't pay for and you're like whatever I'm load my car right here you know at the number one place they go to shoplift grocery store just yep. to get food at least uh, I don't know if it's food but you know they feel more ballsy at the grocery store for shoplifting hmm. what are you gonna steal there I guess I guess well, groceries Steaks. But, Wasn't there something like years ago that they someone like stole their steaks and then they like had them in their pants oh they, they put those jogging that? pants yeah and, they, they and like the lobsters pants. I didn't mm. put a lobster in your pants. There was a whole thing about it. I could have sworn been that was That would weird. look really weird. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it was like all in their pants. You know what? It's that French guy, guy that pole vulture, he's the only one that could get away with doing the... Oh, my gosh. You are obsessed there. with that guy. <laughs> you are <laughs> obsessed. Is that your background? This like guy has, has to be space Eric's background and Eric's head rent-free. That's uh-huh. all he thinks about. That guy lives space. in your head rent-free. Did you see that he, he got won. he got offered $250,000 yeah. for... Um, that was yesterday's mm-hmm. scoop, Sam. Yeah. Yeah. I'm so sorry. <laughs> so I heard it on this show on the radio. I'm so sorry. I must have not paid attention. Maybe I was looking at it too much. I know. You got lucky. You watched the video? I She's like looking at that video slow-mo. I'm so sorry. She's Slow-mo. I've not heard it. Wow, how did that happen? Wow. That was on the name of the else. No wonder they offered him that money. They wear some kind of like, um, they should be wearing some kind of something under there. And compressions. Then the rest of, yeah. Exhibiting, because, it's like wrestlers, those wrestler guys. Yeah. So I think there was compression in there. It was just, you know. Maybe a jock strap or something. Something. Protective. All right, coming up next. Look at its magnificent size. Comedian Joe <laughs> Coy. My taco pop. Is Stop. going to be here <laughs> at the Toyota Center. Oh. And we've got tickets for you to focus on. That's what we want you to focus yeah, on. focus. <laughs> uh, comedian Joe Coy, Toyota Center, September 6th. And we've got a pair of tickets. And your chance to win them is something that's effortless for you, but a lot of work for us. It is the Rule and Ryan Show Rapid Fire Quiz. We need five contestants to call in eight three 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 nine zero K R B E and pick one of us to play for you. Really, you're the, the winner, returning champion, right? That's right. Let me try and go back to back with that belt and get somebody these Joe Coy tickets next on the Rule and Ryan Show.